Shelton here. So glad to be sharing with you again tonight part two of Amazing Grace, um, the hymn by John Newton. It's the United Methodist Hymnal, page 378. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, the last stanzas of Amazing Grace, stanzas two through six. Um, Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. A quick reading of stanzas two through six as they appear in their original publication, The Only Hymns in 1779, may be informative for many readers. Stanzas two and three appear in virtually all hymnals and some include stanza four. Few hymnals produced in the United States include stanzas five and six. Stanzas 1 and 2 address the first large section of Newton's New Year's Day sermon in 1773, Who Am I? Stanza 2, cited above, seems to have been drawn from Newton's sermon notes that day. 1.2, rebellious, blinded by the God of this world, we had not so much a desire of deliverance. Instead of desiring the Lord's help, we breathed a spirit of defiance against him. His mercy came to us not only undeserved, but undesired. Yea, a few of us, but resisted his cause. And when he knocked at the door of our hearts, endeavored to shut him out till he overcame us by the power of his grace. Stanzas three and four relate closely to part two of the sermon that day, that thou hast brought me hither to. A particular sentence in the scripture of the day is relevant here. Who am I, O Lord? And who is mine house? that thou hast brought me hither to, 1 Chronicles 17, 16. Newton's brief notes on this section follow. Here, let us look back. 2.1, before conversion, his providential care, preserving us from a thousand seen, millions of unseen dangers, when we knew not of him. His secret guidance, leading us by a way which we knew not, till his time of love came. While it may be overreaching to ascribe too much direct autobiographical influence in this hymn, one can well imagine that Newton may have inserted an example from his days as a seafaring captain with a cargo of enslaved Africans weathering stormy seas that threatened the lives of all on board. Indeed, it is likely that Africans were lost on every Middle Passage voyage from their homeland to the New World. By the mid-1740s, Newton was reading the influential devotional book, The Imitation of Christ, by German Catholic monk Thomas A. Compass, a turning point in Newton's spiritual life. The first three stanzas cite the word grace six times. Stanza four, the Lord has promised good to me, rounds out the two stanzas addressing part two of the sermon outline. 2.3, mercy and goodness have followed us. In temporals, he has led and fed us. The original stanzas five and six are the least known and rarely used in the current hymnals in the U.S. The United Methodist Hymnal in 1989 is unusual in the fact that it includes five of the originals of the six stanzas virtually intact. The last two stanzas parallel part three of the sermon. You have spoken about the future. Perhaps most surprising is the awareness of the off-printed final stanza in hymnals in the United States, which was not part of the original hymn. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Rarely, if ever, used in English language hymnals outside of the United States, the stanza was located in a collection of sacred ballads in 1790, where it was appended to Jerusalem, My Happy Home. American gospel song composer EOXL 
is credited with attaching this stanza to the end of Newton's Amazing Grace in his coronation hymns for the Church Sunday School, Chicago, 1910. A common practice during the 19th century of revival collections was to freely borrow refrains and stanzas from other sources and integrate them into existing hymns. Sometimes known as wandering or floating stanzas or refrains, obviously stanza six of the original hymn covers some of the same theological territory, that of eschatology or heaven, but it contains a possible Calvinistic interpretation of the election in the third line of this stanza, God who called me here below. Since the revival movement was largely Armenian in theology or salvation open to all, this may have rendered the original stanza six unacceptable. Furthermore, the language of the borrowed stanza is more direct for American ears, though something is lost by omitting the compelling images in Newton's original. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. Newton leaves us a curious note at the conclusion of his sermon in his own hand. I preached this forenoon from 1 Chronicles 17, 16, and 17. Hope I was enabled to speak with some liberty, but found my own heart sadly unaffected. Might it be that, upon reflection, the captain of ships that transported countless enslaved Americans to a life of servitude and misery was still wrestling with the miracle of amazing grace. Though it is tempting, even for this writer, to find autobiographical connections between Newton's dramatic life story and his most famous hymn, Carl Dahl Jr. counsels us wisely. Although modern readers and singers are more likely to look at this hymn for points of connection with Newton's own eventful history as a former sailor and slave trader turned Anglican priest and abolitionist, the author himself probably thought of what he had written as an outline of the typical journey from utter despair. 1.2, a wretch like me, to confident faith in 3.4 of the sermon, grace will lead me home. That assumption of speaking to a general human condition accounts, at least partly, for the widespread use of this hymn. In other cultural contexts of Amazing Grace, the United Methodist Hymnal published anonymous phonetic transcriptions of a stanza in four Native American languages, Cherokee, Kiowa, Creek, and Choctaw, that are sung to the tune of Amazing Grace. A Navajo text by Albert Sosi was added to these. These texts are not translations of Newton's text, but are anonymous, except for the Navajo stanza. Stanzas on the second coming, reflecting more closely the theme of the anonymous final English language stanza appended later to Newton's text. A similar approach was taken in the Presbyterian Church USA hymnal, Glory to God, in 2013. The range of musical styles that incorporate at least a portion of Newton's text is truly astounding and perhaps unparalleled in Christian hymnody. The appearance in William Walker's Southern Harmony was a cultural adaptation to the shape note tradition with a distinctive sound. Note the African-American Dr. Watts meter style transcribed by Evelyn Simpson Curtin for the African-American Heritage Hymnal. More recently, Chris Tomlin's Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, alludes both to the autobiographical context of slavery and to the universal understanding of the power of salvation through grace to free us from all forms of bondage, with the addition of the refrain, My Chains Are Gone. A YouTube clip cited intersperses scenes from the British-Nigerian film Amazing Grace in 2006 about the abolition of slavery in the British Empire, led by William Wilberforce. Most recently, President Obama sang, perhaps spontaneously, Amazing Grace at the June 17, 2015 Charleston Church shooting, a mass shooting by a young white supremacist that killed nine African Americans at the Emmanuel African American Methodist Episcopal Church. Words cannot describe the power of this hymn sung by the first African American president in a city where the sale of enslaved Africans was once a common commercial transaction. Perhaps the greatest enigma of this hymn is that of Amazing Grace speaks globally to the mystery of salvation without mentioning the name of Jesus, much like Sidney Carter's Lord of the Dance in 1963, 
an allegory on the life of Christ that never mentions Jesus. It has a witness well beyond Christian circles. The universality of this hymn lies in our awareness of the wretchedness of the human condition and for a hope deeply embedded in humanity at large that we may be saved from conditions by something beyond ourselves. Amazing Grace. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and listening to all these devotions based around um, the great hymns of faith. Uh, a lot of the information that you're hearing is drawn from the General Board of Discipleship website um, of the United Methodist Church. You can go to that to gbod.org and uh, just write in the name of the hymn if you want to know more about it. And it'll pop up a thing that says History of Hymns. They have a whole series on there that you might find interesting. If we don't cover this month one of the hymns that you would like to hear, uh, we'd encourage you to go to that site and read along. Thanks.